And you have a cat behind you. That's very nice. And I have, it's a today black... I prepared. I have lots of cats here. There's <laughs> three of them with me. Great, great. <laughs> and and one is black and somehow resembles. Uh, not really. No, no, not really. But <laughs> not um, really. is it? Come here! Stop running from me! Stop running from me! Stop running from me! So this one here is four months old. Oh, nice! Well, he's cute. super cute. Really cute. So I'm just <laughs> gonna use this entire stream to just plug my cats. And not talk about the game at all. I think this will make for a much better stream. Okay, so let's let's say terrible things about our yeah. game while we're streaming it on the homepage of Steam. It's it's uh, yeah, it's uh, the best way. <laughs> no, no, it's just it's not it's nothing bad about the game. It's just that cats are always more interesting. Yes. That's definitely, it's definitely. It's the rule of the internet. I mean, the internet is 90% cats, then you know that. Yeah. The rest, of the other 10% can be our game. Or? I, I'm generous that way. Okay, okay. And a bit of Adam Driver, maybe? I thought we weren't going to say that name. <laughs> well, you said, I mean, cats and Adam what? Driver. That's what's, what's the, the best things in life now. Obviously, yes. Um, Obviously. Also, thank you so much for outing me to everybody who's possibly watching this who might know me. Um, I just just said that you, as many people, enjoy this excellent actor for his yes. uh, acting skills. I'm yeah. playing in the, in the meantime. <laughs> Today we did a nice nice uh, feature about uh, a nice feature we developed um, controller mapping. Because okay. uh, well, first of all, thank you to all the players that in these days have um, gave us suggestion, found also a couple of bugs, <laughs> and and then we found out how many kinds of different controllers uh, people play with use with Steam, so PlayStation controllers, Nintendo. I mean all sorts of stuff so we today we implemented the, the full keyboard and control remapping feature also because many keyboards we mapped it on the qwerty sequence but of course french german and many other keyboards are not qwerty yeah you're in, in your original country yes we are man wrong about many many things on, on this planet this is one of them okay and um, okay, so let's. I think we're, we're live on Steam. So the, this game is about uh, it's about you, a coach of uh, five five athletes that uh, play roller derby, and you you play and live with them uh, in the same house. And so there's a strong uh, narrative component to this game, and there's a story. And there's a say, evolving set of relationships between you and the girls and also the girls between themselves and also with many other characters and so there's uh, many nice interactive dialogues whose author we see on top <laughs> just above and uh, it's Verena Karatsis who is uh, an expert uh, game writer and narrative designer and she was so nice to be she has been working with me on this for about Six months, more or less, maybe more. I mean, we started talking about it a lot earlier, but I yes, think I've actually yes. been working on it for six months, yeah. yeah. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm just a drop. Okay, so where where shall we start showing the game? So now now I'm showing the, the so the game the girls are in a roller derby team. Roller derby is a full contact uh, sports on skates where two teams um, well five athletes try to lap each other. Uh, well, one of them does. It's called the jammer. Uh, in uh, in this uh, flat track. This is a flat track, the contemporary modern version of the sport. And it's a very indie sport, also for management and uh, the kind of um, how it's felt, played and managed. And um, there are a couple, in particularly one documentary on the sport, which I, which I found extremely inspiring because it shows that as many sports do, people 
that play this sport somehow use it as a framework as a setup also the community around the sport to somehow evolve their lives and somehow express things and deal with problems and so on and so i thought this was very inspiring the sport is beautiful and um, of course it's quite complex because it's two teams on the same track with two jammers scoring parallel at the same time so the this 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 is not a roller derby simulator which would be completely beyond the means of our minuscule four people team uh, only of two working almost part-time nobody full-time <laughs> so um, but we did we did select some of the features of the sport and um, and I think uh, we hope that it's 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 fun to play and um, there's uh, always a deep integration between playing the matches and um, and this, what happens in the narrative and the story. So I I think I'll I'll, I'll leave the match uh, here for the moment. So matches are played with a real time and, and strategical component. And I'll go to the start of the game and then I'll start uh, asking uh, Verena things about about the story and about the game, the characters, the environment, and so on. Okay, so well, the game is now the demo is now available on Steam. It will be published in eight languages: English, French, German, Italian, Spanish, Brazilian, Portuguese, simplified Chinese, and Japanese. And it will be on on steam of course it's already running quite fine on a steam deck you can now find it there on the steam deck store and it will also be on the switch nintendo switch will be on app store on google play and uh, this will be uh, early january february of 2023 so in, uh, very early very soon <laughs> scarily soon and uh, then it will be published also on playstation i think Okay, so so the girls, of course, they play in the same team, but they also live in the same house. So how does this work? How does this turn out? And how did we write that? <laughs> um, how did we write that? Oh God, you you make it sound like I had, had a plan. Um, no. Uh, I just got completely lost my focus. Um, <laughs> question, please. I'm I'm 100% here. I swear. Yes. I'm very sorry. <laughs> I think well, I just had a complete no, part. No, 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 no. But I I was just thinking. In, in my defense, it was a very long question. Yes, yes. But um, so what I'm just saying is that we had we we've put them all in the same house because we were inspired we wanted to recreate uh, like a sitcom kind of setting yes so with um. the two sides of them one is the fact that so in a sitcom in a closed environment there's a lot of interactions and things that may change but also as a setting for the humoristic side of the game because this game is tries to be it's full of funny stuff and ridiculous silly situations which are sort of silly but also tragic in a way um so this is our context no yes absolutely i mean uh i think i'm slightly repeating things that i said on tuesday but uh we talked a lot about um both things that we've recently watched and things that we really liked when we were younger oh my god that sounds like we're so ancient we're not we're very young hip hip people both of us um anyway uh so we talked about fleabag and um which is very recent and then, then much much older things like say uh, the party um ah yes yes yeah the party. Great movie. And, but yeah. so a series very important is crashing of course that's a direct inspiration yes because, and it's it's the series i don't not that many people saw it i think but it's 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 by the same author and she's also the main character in Fle so feedback she she's also is she's not actually the main character in crashing. In crashing is a bit like in roller drama. All 
all in our case five characters they all play such an important part in the game let's say four of them a bit more than one other than cordelia maybe but still and who knows maybe in the first dlc it will expand with huge huge branch with for cordelia too but anyway yes those series and setting were a bit um... ah another one was also sick note uh, mm -hmm. Because of this mechanics which you, which is which you, we have in this game, which is which is the fact that a, a little problem in becomes in a s s series of stages and bad bad management and the bad handling a bigger and bigger uh, problem. You know? Yeah, I mean that's a very recurring theme in comedy that you you have a problem and you do something to fix it and you maybe you know you slap a bandaid on the problem that you currently have but somehow your your bandaid creates a bigger problem <laughs> and you do something to fix that but that then creates another even bigger problem and so it's, it's kind of this cascade effect um, of things spiraling out of control and um, I'm always uh, a big fan of like also calling them these things back later and um... mm. Mm. which which i noticed you you did several times in in the dialogues that's that's a very nice touch uh... i mean i think running gags if, if done well are the best thing in the world um, <laughs> yes you have to stop me from spiraling out of control but there's so many things here that i can think of where where something completely innocent starts in a in a tv show in a movie and in the beginning you're like oh that's not that funny um not that anything in our game is not that funny everything is obviously completely hilarious of course, um of course, i'm being sarcastic yeah i hope that's coming through uh, <laughs> And I also am not sarcastic because no, true. no, I but, didn't know. Um, anyway, uh, like your terrible psychiatrist, where did you get your degree in the 17th century? I mean, exactly. <laughs> and um, uh, I had a thread there. Anyway, so if you repeat anything long enough, it, it just it starts getting funny at some point. <laughs> as <husband> well knows. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, okay. And it's recorded and we'll go in loop. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Just don't don't ever show him the game. I mean uh, no danger. <laughs> okay. And uh, yeah, I, one thing sorry I interrupt you, but one thing I want no. to, to to tell is the fact that this um this fact of having this situation that are somehow going south uh so a part of them do go south but part of your work work as a coach as an external character is is some, somehow to keep things below a threshold and and in fact the score because there's this running score and the quest and the, the, the overall relationship in the game all this um, so we sort of built, took this kind of mechanics and oh, it, it gets uh, fed back in the game through this notion of completing quests in, a, in the best possible way, but also, I mean, there are, you can do some damage, but still succeed and proceed with the story. And this is one thing. So for example, if I, if I go here in the game, you have this monitor which you can check all the time about the state the so-called mental state and relationship state of all the five girls and where you have this the self-esteem relationship with you and also this this thing about the personal evolution maybe we should say something about the the, the personal evolution thing yes we can say something about that uh, okay so um John, as a coach, is um, obviously a m more mature character, um, but the five girls are, well, they're five girls, um, and um, as such, I mean, they're, they're slightly unformed, I think, when they enter the house. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. they, have, um, they have their own problems. Every girl has their own baggage. Not not necessarily in a way that gets discussed in great detail in the game um with some with some but mm -hmm. it's, it's not like every every one of them has like a big monologue about to hear the five things that happened in my childhood that <laughs> messed me up well, fortunately not have... I say. <laughs> huh? fortunately not i say 
Yes, exactly. <laughs> Nobody wants to see that. I mean, um, or, like, in, in any story, I think you have to strike a balance between um, comedy and drama. And uh, so too much of one um, completely takes the joy out of the other. Um, anyway, uh, I had a point there about the personal evolution, yes. So, um, they all come into the house uh, with their own baggage and um, as flawed individuals and they don't e exit the house as, as completely whole, perfect, wonderful creatures of light, but um, they all um, have to basically learn first to not only care about themselves but about the, the people that live with them in the house and then later they have to learn to care um, basically about the... Um, the greater well, that sounds so incredibly trite when i say it but the greater good like society as a yeah. whole uh, about well, giving rather than taking yeah we had we had we had this doubt at a certain point you remember i know that the, mm -hmm. that and and i you you were a good help there because i was i mean the fact that we uh, without shamelessly uh let's say have have um portray in the game the fact that it's possible to have a positive personal evolution not in the sense of being becoming conformistic or or adhering to to society's uh mores but uh which is just a latin word i'm not sure it's english but anyway yeah probably it is uh, I modest. You. yeah okay uh, <laughs> i mean um that's because my kids are both studying Latin now in school. Oh, look at me. I'm the great game developer. I speak in Latin. <laughs> no, it's only because of them. <laughs> and they force me to remember this terrible stuff from my, from my teenagerhood. But anyway. <laughs> and um, yeah, so we tried to do two things. So to have like interesting and also very different kind of set of characters and um but still to have somehow a constructive message Maybe yeah this is... <laughs> jesus christ what's happening in the background i hope my microphone is not picking that up no it's not anyway, picking anything <laughs> there's this cat dying in the background just forget oh i see one cat it's down there and he's he's yeah, very she's curious the other <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> um anyway so uh yeah i <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm not the most altruistic person on the planet because uh, I think everybody could do, uh, most people could try to do more, but I, it's something that I very much believe in that, um, you know, each do as they can. And um, I think that's something that we really um, wanted to uh, portray in the game that um, it's, if you want to live on a, in a better place, world then like you have to do some, you have to do your own thing to to make that happen um yeah, in your own way it. however you're able and um so this i think links to to a problem that micro narrative production like ours which uh, of course wants to have not only choices but somehow all the choices after the intro have consequences so for this kind of narrative game um it's in fact a limit a big limit of the demo is the fact that you don't uh you have to the more you enter the narrative the more you see how the the choices that you do have consequences and so on so you would probably see this much better in in the actual game than in in the demo but this also opens the the, the problem of um having choices uh in the game that not but we don't have the means to do like an open world game where anything can happen the characters can evolve in any different direction so in fact the story is scripted but how how the how you and the girls will actually come out of it it's not so it's the same story but with very different people coming uh, out of it and so this is how we we limited somehow the the combinatorial explosion of of uh, which which would uh, make it uh, for us very hard oh i was lucky i found the cat would for, for us make it very hard because the game combines 
interactive fiction and dialogues, puzzles where you have to find stuff and solve puzzles, and also a sport management real time and strategy. So it's not that a small production, but we have uh, but we managed to do it with small means. So maybe we can say something about the fact that you of of having right and wrong choices in in the dialogues and and this is something we've been working on and um, yeah i lost yeah. it in the meantime <laughs> <laughs> losing the cat is very bad in this game yes. um, this is not a spoiler anyway um yes uh choices um yeah, it's uh, oh God. Um, you expect me to give an intelligent answer to that? You're very bold. No, um, I mean yes, yes, I do. But but uh, I mean. <laughs> I'll try my best. I'll try my best. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, it's it's difficult in this game because um, obviously any choice uh, kind of makes um, things branch uh, in in many ways, and we don't have the budget to really do that uh, in the way in uh, an open world game that has like a budget of millions and 300 people or a thousand people working on it would have so uh, so we had to limit ourselves a bit but um god stop me when i'm saying something incredibly not intelligent um anyway uh but um i had a, i had something that i wanted to say about that but without uh, so the other extreme of that from making it like completely open which sadly we can't do uh is um often to come up with these very trite um you know binary choices of uh, um hey here is a little puppy that you can save do you want to save the puppy or do you want to drown, drown it in the stream and you're like oh, well duh obviously i want to drown the puppy too oh, <laughs> idiot. uh no but um yeah but often the choices that are, you're presented with are very obvious ones i mean or rather that's often that can be a, a very easy fallback option to take so what we try to do is like mm. to present the player with choices that are um both not totally obvious but also not punishing because one thing that i hate above all else in games when it's like hey so the puppy you want to drown it or you want to save it and then you're like oh, obviously i'm going to save the puppy you what and then it's the wrong thing something? and then it's like <laughs> Oh, ha, ha, but you, you didn't know is that the puppy would later kill Jesus. Um, and, and it's like, dude, no. Anyway, so so we that's, also tried... That's our next Jesus. game, but anyway. Uh, yeah, obviously, I'm, I'm <laughs> plugging that. Anyway, so, um, so we also tried not to do these 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 faults, these, these choices that kind of trick you into thinking that you're doing the right thing, and then later it's like the worst possible thing that you could no. have done. Yeah. Um, was that more or less the answer that you were hoping for? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, Good, excellent. Yes, yes. but uh, I think while you were explaining, you showed an example, which is we use humor. Humor saves a lot of that, in fact. Uh, so the fact that you're taking an almost wrong choice, but then we save you somehow anyway, and we try to we tease you. We will tease you all the time in this game. And, I mean, um, I, I'm I'm not gonna lie. I I really like making people laugh. So. I'll, Often the, the slightly less good choice is also the funnier one. So yes. I would kind of encourage players to sometimes be a bit purposefully stupid. <laughs> I, I often enjoy writing those more. So. It's like the little angel on my shoulder and the little devil on my shoulder. And <laughs> like, um, oh yeah, but you could write something really insane there if you wanted to. Like, yeah, should I? That's why you have the cats. That's, that's what they do. Um, right? Yeah. <laughs> Um, they're my little, I have lots of little devils and not so many little angels. Um, I'm about to this is finish the very simple but first quest uh, in the game, which is simply, which already shows one of the characters, Anne, that absolutely wants the embalmed cat, which is that, but this fact, are we cruel against animals in this game somehow? I mean, no, no, not at all. Okay. So, but you have to play the, the full game to understand. I think. 
Yes, correct. But there is like I'm, I'm a girl. Okay, so I'm very sensitive towards animal cruelty. There's movies that I cannot watch at all because me either, and I'm not a girl. To animals, so what, what, and what, what we are not in any way cruel towards <laughs> animals, even though cats often deserve it. Isn't that right? <laughs> okay. Okay. And so now the story is about, it's, I think it's including the first and the last, which are not... Um, so the game is, the story is divided in chapters. And if you don't like something that we did, so I think a very boring thing of, I love narrative games and games with choices, but it's very boring when you, you do something wrong or you don't like where it's going and you have to replay the full game to, to get back to that point and make this single one choice. So what we did is that the game saves chapters so that that um, you can here we see that choices change relationships self-esteem and so on so in in it allows you to restart the game from any of the chapters that you completed so this this will save you so this gives you some replayability and some comfort there and also another thing that we did uh, is uh, we presented to friends that are very, let's say, passionate about narrative games and so on, but maybe not so interested to, to get extremely skilled in uh, the roller derby part. So we added some functions. <laughs> we added some functions. Oh, I don't think so. I, I never seen you play the roller derby. You have never seen me play the, play the roller derby. The roller derby part. Very, uh huh. Yeah, there might be a good. very obvious reason for that. Um, mm. no, uh, no, I have played it obviously, but I mean, I enjoy it. I think it's it's really good, and it's come such a long way since in the beginning when you first showed it to me. And but like, I'm a writer. What can I say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, um, so we've seen this strong narrative part, the choices, the chapters, and so on. Now all this. Uh, somehow uh, comes together with the sport so because well this is actually true also in real real sports not just in, in games the, the mental state of players their determination their uh, energy their uh, how they're feeling well or not this all plays a big role in the performance in fact the, the slogan of the game is performance is a mindset so uh before also during because there's a possibility of giving pep talks which are talks to encourage players and um and after the matches there's a lot of discussion about what has happened what what could be improved and and also in by playing the game you can win special cards which we'll see in the in the gameplay part um uh, allow you to do special moves and um, and so let's say this is how we progressively more and more and more integrated the narrative and the sport part and all these matches sports uh, um, all contributes to to keeping track of a score now it didn't do much so a score is still low six six hit scores of nine opportunity points and of relationship you see here like for example already had two bad a bad relationship with with Portia and she had a lowering of her self-esteem so I haven't handled that too well but overall the score it's okay for the moment let's say so we see that you can it, it, you don't need to do a perfect game to to survive it but uh, if it if it starts really going south then you have to, to replay at least the last chapter if not not the full game so here, here in this um, in this uh, first match meeting, we are deciding the team name, which will be decided. So it will be you as a coach who take the final decisions. But here we already see the girls' personalities suggesting names, and I gave a bad answer to Anne, so she was a bit frustrated there. <laughs> Cordelia, uh, just the expressions. We have the expressions that I think they're so nice. The mm -hmm. character designed by Vic, Victoria Machoshi, and um, the core development is done by Pino Pansarella, my partner, and myself. 
part of the encoding. And um, okay, let's affirm now. So how about picking the name? Let's see. Let's be. I should decide. <laughs> Democracy much? See, this was not a, not as smart. Anyway. And you suggested eat my skates. Okay, so they, they have a little fights between them, and this will evolve in the narrative also. Um, what shall we pick? Are you asking me? <laughs> I don't know. You're playing, I'm just watching you, adoringly. <laughs> okay, let's go with all real divas. I like divas. She's happy. She's happy, Juliet. She's a great character, Juliet. Really are. Oh, this are all right. Divas! Or the Coliseum. We'll be against false stuff. <laughs> okay, we have to win. We have to win this. There's, a, there's an author that gets a lots of references here in this game. I mean, like an, an older gentleman deceased in the very, yes. centuries. Yes. 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 It's almost like some one of the developers has an obsession with him. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, well, you see, it's because the, it's lack of respect and humor and basically not respecting anything and playing with the language about anything. I think that's a, that's a night. I, I mean, I, I'm not That's quite exactly as what you... obsessed with you. Yeah. Um, like some of my obsessions have also found their way into the game mysteriously. But anyway, uh, but uh, he's, he's fascinating because he just... I mean, back then language was a lot more fluid like it's, than it's nowadays because we didn't have, you know, um, the uh, onset of print and whatnot has just, you know, solidified everything a lot but back then he was just like oh i don't have a word for that excellent i'll just make one up <laughs> um, <laughs> well it, yeah it, that's i think that's true in general but in that particular moment english was particularly you know absorbing absor it's always been a very a very a language that absorbs a lot of other but in that moment it seems crazy because it was not just shakespeare but also many other authors that like, yeah, and I know, and in many cases it's just that because a lot of his works have survived, we just have the first instance of a word being used from his works. Yes, um, they they did a comparative work there. He did introduce a particularly high number of because that's a personality, of course. <laughs> uh, yeah. So there's some serious references. Okay. So so the game the game so we went to the game so no so the. It's, it's still them. We see them in a very different uh, clothings, and um, uh, but it's still them. It's, just, it's the same girls, and um, we've seen there's a little tutorial introducing you to roller derby. Uh, but I think that if you just play a couple of matches, you get the gist uh, of it. And um, yeah, we're all wheel demons against all stuff. The skill level, there's a skill level here because again, in order to make the game inclusive, somehow uh, you can adjust on setting the, the difficulty of matches. They will grow in time, of course, compared to what is the skill level that you've chosen. And again, stuff from, from the narrative can help you uh, win matches. You can, you have, you will have to uh, take care of the how much energy each of them is consuming uh, during the matches because otherwise if one gets completely exhausted you will lose just lose the match on the spot and um, so this is one dimension that you have to take care of and again this is influenced by, by your, your, by your coach relationship with, uh, with them these are the two commentators which are a friend of us one is Putin, one is big character designer, and uh, yeah, you can now customize the controller. And this is this is good. it. Will be a, there will be a championship. So the chapters of the game, uh, each chapter, oh, about almost all chapters have one match in them, and of course the how the match is interpreted. 
also depends on the moment of the story and some some moment of the story really in, interact uh, a lot with, um, with, uh, with the matches. I have to do the tutorial. There's a controller tutorial. What's nice of the controller is that you can with the front with the front trigger and and uh, bumpers you can do the full control of the real time uh, features. So that is very practical. And in, in the keyboard is QWRT is a little fast. So let's see. Uh, but let's stop this here. And um, shall we shall we say something about um, how I mean? So the story begins with them getting in the house, finding their rooms, having the first little fights about I want this, I want that, and then then I think we basically have at least one chapter dedicated to each of them. Maybe we can go through. What happens to like to what happens to Juliet without spoiling too much? Easy, easy setup for you. <laughs> easy, easy setup for me. I'm with Mr. Juliet. Um, what does happen to Juliet? It's been some of these things has it's been a while since I've written them. Um, up to forty-eight hours ago, which basically is ancient history for me. Um, just restarting for time as I desperately try to remember. Well, 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 yeah. Juliet is, uh, is a builder. She Yes, no, no, I, I got that much. Um, so she's a, um, Juliet is someone who is, um, I think as you can already see in the character design, she's like this, I always call her the gentle giant, um, but I think um, with that comes a certain feeling that she's, like she's, she has physical prowess, but she's not entirely convinced of the fact that she can con contribute intellectually to the team, uh, which is not necessarily true, but like your image of yourself is not always entirely what other people get of you. So I think she's very, very concerned with being a bit slow. And uh, that's not necessarily true because I think she's very intelligent, but um, yeah. she's just, Nervous, um, not in a fidgety way, but like she's she's very considerate um, of uh, what she says. She she tends to speak in very um, a bit monosyllabically, and um, and she actually has like really great um, talents for crafting and well, mm. crafts really. So um, throughout the game, she um, several times actually comes through for the others um, with. Um, well, with her own homemade fixes, she's a bit of um, the Frankenstein of the um, of the team. No, that's not because he just does the last of it. Um, I just was reminded of that one image of her. Uh, anyway, um, she's uh, she has um, great skills and um, and often helps the others, which is surprising. Um, I think even to her because uh, well, she's she's. Just at first glance this big clumsy person but then she actually um has this other side of her and i'm just saying the same things over and over again so whenever you want to stop me please because <laughs> i'm not because not going anywhere good <laughs> well because i'm playing a quite a good jam finally and, okay. and so i'm a bit um i'm nodding to you and actually playing uh -huh. the game and enjoying it greatly and uh, yes, they should definitely go back and then after that do a wall. And so after Juliet, that that, <laughs> that we by now know everything about, uh, let's say something about Anne, Anne and Portia. So this is a very long and very complex relationship full of fights. And yes, yeah. I think there are two characters that, um, I mean, for one thing, Portia, without going too much into into things that might give things away plot-wise, Portia has a lot of things that Anne wants, mm -hmm. and um, not necessarily justifiably. Like uh, it's it's mostly in her head. Um, these are not things that she really wants. She's more kind. Uh, Anne is somebody who um, her backstory, which uh, is 
as I said earlier, not the girls don't have like a big monologue saying, okay, here's my backstory, here are the five things that messed me up. But Anne um, had a had a very hard childhood, so she um, she is very um, conscious of the things she has and um, of the things that other things. Um, other people have and she tends to be very jealous so if somebody has something that she perceives as being desirable then she'll often go like yeah but come on give it and um and so very often she has um these uh confrontations with Portia who uh, who she perceives as um having fairly or unfairly gained things that Anne should have instead and um and so they they clash a lot because um Portia is not timid she's actually the captain of the team she's a very forceful personality but she's she's a little bit twitchy and she will maybe sometimes um take the easy way out when a confrontation comes whereas Anne, whenever she she sees an opening she just like goes straight for it and you know <laughs> well she's the through. jammer so she's the one that yeah. has to lap the other has to fast it has to run and so on in fact you you may well like one nice thing of roller derby is this is sort of inclusive of body types in a sense but this at the basic level I mean when I hear this oh there is inclusive it's in a very restricted sense in the sense that you still have to be extremely athletic extremely yeah. strong <laughs> capable of of full contact of, of, of receiving uh, somehow and and so if you look at the top teams of course uh, I mean, yeah, athletes, athletes. Yeah, it's still a sport. Uh, I mean, it, it is a very much a sport. Yeah. So okay. it's not chess. And uh, well, chess you can cheat. We know that by now. So easy, yes. easy. Um, <laughs> so one thing, I well, I'm very proud. I'm, I stopped the screen here because I'm winning 24-16. So while listening to you, so this is this incredible achievement. And um, so, by the right, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I just want to stop here and show the auto play next jam, which is a, 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 a very silly feature. <laughs> Instead of playing the full three jams, you can just uh, go to auto play a bit like a uh, football manager here. If, if you like very immersed in the narrative, we want to get as fast as possible to the next narrative chapter and see how it goes, you can skip this. And so, what we did with really silly way of uh, sort of parametrically randomly determining who is going to win uh, the gem and as I did a decent uh, result I should have some advantage but I'm being extremely unlucky it's extremely extremely unlucky and it went so bad that I'm actually by now I'm <laughs> losing Let's. I'll, 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 I should. I in well. If I was playing uh, by myself, I, I would play the next gem because in order to recover the points. But here I would just do this because we, we have many things to say. And I, I will now cease saying things because I just realized that all our friends have arrived and they're watching this. So I will now clam up and not. <laughs> I will. We will we'll talk. To, just show the cats. <laughs> Yeah, look, look, Anthony, cat, cat, yeah. <laughs> um, no way. Okay, okay, okay. And, um, okay, so, well, I think this, we lost, but I didn't lose the jam I was playing, so my, my self-esteem yeah. is still high. And we talked about Anne, we talked about Portia, we talked about Juliet, and we have another very interesting character. I, I, I find her very, very interesting much more interesting than I thought it would be at the beginning we thought it would be a bit she wasn't much involved in the stories but then we discovered this sort of geeky character a geeky side of hers of her character yeah this was very nice in fact in the process of writing the game finding uh, let's say a very specific because we had from the start some bios and in particular what what were their negative obsessions but in the game then we we this the first time I think we, 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 we think about this, we found their positive skills while writing the game, no? And we worked on that, the positive yeah, sides, I mean, yes. I think that that kind of goes hand in hand with this idea of um, of wanting to contribute to uh, to the greater good, which again sounds so corny. Anyway, um, 
let's just go with it, um, contribute yes. to society. Anyway, uh, so, um, as, and as I said earlier, each and each as they can. So um, we have uh, Anne who, who gets very, gets angry easily, but that also means that she does, she won't back down from a fight and she will fight for the things that she believes in. We have Portia who is a lot more um, thoughtful and will often like back away and analyzes, um, analyze the situation. We have um, Juliet, who's um, very crafty. We have um, Cordelia, whom we're not going to talk about that much, I think, today, but uh, she's um, she's the artist. Um, and we have Lily, who um, who is you know, the nerd, the tech genius. So um, if you need something, if you need something hacked, if you need something faked, anything like that, then you know she's she's the girl that you go to. And so um, so each of the girls like contribute to um, well both the the well-being of the team and you know the cause. Um, I have no idea why I just did that. Anyway, I'm, um... <laughs> I, I know I'm distracting you intentionally more and more. <laughs> my, my dear man, we set this up wrong today and I can neither see you nor the game. I'm flying completely blind. All I can see is me and my cats, so you're not well, distracting me. Okay. Sadly, you're not distracting me at all. Um, I will so, then, I will anyway, then. So, if you look at um, the stream, maybe for just a moment. Yeah, then I can see what happened two minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 let me see, let me see. No, 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 don't, don't play around with it. We almost made it. Okay. Um, come on. I just want to, because it's pretty boy. Okay, I was trying to oh distract God, you. Just check the stream, he's still there, I oh, think. Oh, look at him, he's so cute. <laughs> okay. okay. This is no way my obsession making it into the game um <laughs> well both our obsessions is yeah. basically a personal thing between us and the so game. you had to put that in to motivate me to work on this yes i in yeah. fact it's 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 actually what happened i knew <laughs> i did it on purpose yes <laughs> you knew it yeah. then okay <laughs> yes Anyway, where were we? Um, so <laughs> everyone contributes uh, in their own way, and Lily is the tech expert, the nerd. Mm, mm, mm. I said this before. Yes, but I have a hook there. I have a hook there because the why do we need a tech expert? Because there is this environment where you were living. There is this power, this surveillance-based uh, government. There's that sort of democratic uh, society but not that much anymore and of course and so somehow the story goes at a certain point and touches all these these themes too and yeah and uh, this is the oldest joke in the book i've read it uh, heard it a million times on the internet but when we started making this game i was like oh this is you know not so far away but a couple of decades in the future dystopia and now um you know where we're at currently i'm like oh no this is near future dystopia we're almost yeah. there lovely yeah. um <laughs> maybe retro for something yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 so uh, i i don't want to spoil too much i'm spoiling a lot but, um, i'm curious yeah but this is nice to see we've we've been collecting uh cards, quests, little things that we solved and it shows you this how you, your score evolved so where you got the points where you didn't and um, so nothing of it what has happened up now is catastrophic but so we, we would survive this way it's bad but not sinking and not the bottom <laughs> and yeah I did manage several mistakes but anyway and sorry yeah sorry but it was, I think, an uh, opportunity to, to show this. And uh, something we haven't, I haven't shown maybe much, is that the the puzzles, oh, the puzzles that you solve are often by using uh, objects, hiding them, and um, you can always talk with your objects. In this case, it's a talking head. And but but um, in fact, it's a sort of stealth. Uh, game because you're moving is a typical humor situation so moving taking things when the girls are not in their room seeing where they hid stuff try to manipulate them so to convince them not to be too aggressive with the other and things like this and uh, so this is a 
important aspect of the game that you get just hinted at, uh, at in the in the demo. But there's a lot of that uh, in the game. I hope. Also, it's all in a sort of bit silly, ridiculous thing. But then, a certain point of the story, it goes and because roller derby, we imagine roller derby this kind of the sort of roller derby. Um, that we have in game is very important for the society, no? So it's like a big, um, a big event that everybody's watching somehow. So, so the fact that that it's it's like the most important sport is like uh, what was the movie? Um, uh, oh, oh, wait. Um, you mean? Uh, uh, I can't. I come up with it right now. Uh, yeah. The the horrible dystopian movie from the 60s yes. with um yeah uh that one and, um and and um yeah so so i so if you if you get to the ending chapters of the game you'll see more and more how the society around the girls and the team can be influenced by somehow influenced by by your actions and i think this uh, again is a bit of a moralistic uh, side of our, <laughs> of our uh, writing. Uh, I don't know if moralistic. I'd say no. Moralistic is a, is not a not a nice word. I think. Yeah, I know it's not nice. Uh, uh, it could be interpreted so, but it's not. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> and um, yeah, I, I'm in a corner now. <laughs> Well, it's a bit like it's a Spider-Man thing. Like with uh, with great power comes great responsibility. Um, these girls are star athletes, so um, they're in a way they're in a position to mm. to change things. Mm, 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 mm. Okay. Um, I think I think um, I'll, I'll get back to the the main menu. This is clearly the development uh, version of the game, so. It's not what you in the demo. You cannot jump through the various chapters of the game by cheating, but this is Rollerball. That's the name of the movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, yeah, I, I was thinking of another more recent, but anyway. Um, Sorry. Um, Hunger Games. Hunger Games. Oh, that one. Yeah. 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 Bread and circuses. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and you're part of the circus, but at a certain point, if you make it, you can make the circus somehow a rebel. So... Mm -hmm. Okay, I think I think we've talked about the main features of of the sport, the narrative, the gameplay, the platforms, the team, and um, so the game will be the demo is always available now. And so we are coming out of the game in the very first months of 2023. So I think uh, we can uh, leave it here. And um, Verena, do you want to say something more about your cats or something? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm very happy that they managed not to kill uh, yeah they, are, they seem so quiet and nice and well educated hi everyone um and... sorry i'm looking at the chat they're distracting me they're very oh, is, bad are there no, any questions no, there just, just just friends being trolling um, us of course yeah our absolutely us, of course, of course. <laughs> okay well great thank thank you verena and thank you to all the people listening we really hope you will try the demo add it to the wish list this is a completely self uh, produced uh, really <laughs> independent game um, so by yes. a really 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 small team of two, two developers one game writer one character designer and one musician Yes, buy this game or this cat will not get tuna. No? <laughs> Sorry. But he's very mad at me right now, I shouldn't have said that. Okay. Jesus. Yes. Don't kill well. me, please. Okay. Thank you so much then. Talk soon. Bye. Bye bye.